Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Great! Now let's see what's inside. Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. What's... what's wrong, my lord? Um, uh, tell me. What's with all the bodyguards? Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? And it's true. She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. You're the devil incarnate. The devil? I'm not saying that all Judeo-Christian folklore hasn't served us, but the truth is, of course, something quite different. Please, don't look at us through the primitive prism of religions. I am not hiding any horns or goat's feet, Louis. I have no tail. Why do you bring up folklore? You mean that you've taken advantage of people's beliefs? No, not exactly. I mean that we in fact created them from scratch. It is amazing to see how mankind has such a strong need to believe in something superior to itself. It was very instructive for what was to come. Lucifer, the fallen archangel, left heaven accompanied by 133,306,668 angels. Is it true that there are that many of you? No, I assure you, Louis. Forget your Bible class, it's ridiculous. We are not angels, we don't have wings. There is certainly nowhere near a million of us. And for that matter, no sacred human text represents us correctly. There are several families, and the family to which I belong has eight siblings, including Gregory and myself. Sir Gregory is your brother? Yes, what can I say? <laughs> you can't choose your family. But it is very difficult to know exactly how many of us there are, because a large number of our kind remain hidden, or never reveal themselves even to us. You've been Mortimer for 600 years? How long have the demons been among mankind? Oh, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that we have always been here. If I follow you, 
You must have witnessed some of the greatest moments in history. <laughs> you could certainly say that, yes. Did you know ancient Egypt? Oh, yes, yes. We were gods on Earth in those days. What did men call you then? Amenhotep IV. The... the tenth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty? Ooh, I see you're a connoisseur, Louis. Impressive. Did you know ancient Greece? In many ways, yes. One day Pericles, the next Parmenides. Just the memory of the time I spent working on acoustics with Pythagoras. Well, it, it moves me quite deeply, to tell the truth. Pericles. He's the one who brought Athens to its golden age, isn't he? Mm -hmm. In a way, yes. He established democracy, and then died during an epidemic. It wasn't so long after his two sons passed away. Isn't that right? Excuse me, Louis. I... I would rather not relive any more of that, if you don't mind. Did you experience ancient Rome? Oh, yes. Luxury and decadence, Louis. My family did indeed reign supreme, but from this period I retain only the works of my friend, Marcus Vitruvius Polio. I've noticed that you have a passion for the Crusades. Among other things, yes. Mainly the Third. It was during the Siege of St. Joan of Arc that I took possession of Lord Mortimer. And... You've never changed skins or bodies since? I have used other envelopes, but only to carry out very short tasks. Apart from that, indeed, I have been able to retain the identity of William Alexander Mortimer throughout the centuries. You seem to be fascinated by Christ. He... You aren't him, are you? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, not at all. He was my father, though. Strange as it seems. I beg your pardon? Am I dreaming? Ugh, please tell me I'm dreaming. We should have the chance to talk about all that again later, but... Yes, yes, he was my father. All the mythology surrounding Jesus of Nazareth really stems from my father's prideful need to show himself among men. And you truly have the power to manipulate the thoughts of men. That's right. Every demon has the capacity to infiltrate the minds of men and to read and steer their thoughts. Can you tell me more about your capacities, your supernatural powers? Supernatural? From my point of view, they are perfectly natural. Well, Louis, just because the monkey does not fly doesn't mean that we should consider the bird a supernatural creature. We are all part of a grand design. We are simply made like this. By developing our art, we are able to read thoughts as well as write in the minds of men. It is possible for us to make them bow to our desire, but it doesn't work without leaving some scars. And what do you do with this power? We help them, of course. And how is it you help men, exactly? Let's just say that without us, man would probably never have left his cave. Fire, the wheel, tools, writing. We are the spark that inspires man to search, to grow, to evolve. Why should I trust you? I'm not asking you to, Louis. If you are still in doubt about the demons, I can assure you that won't last long. What has my mother got to do with all this? She embarked on a crusade many years ago to kill all the demons. That must have upset you. I imagine you retaliated. No. I'm afraid she never forgave me. Forgave what? We met when she was still just a young woman. I appeared to her in a different form because I didn't want to reveal the identity of Lord Mortimer at that time. She was looking for someone interested in the occult to decipher an ancient book. We spent many years together, until I revealed my true nature to her. The old book was Al-Azif, wasn't it? Did she speak about it? Not so long ago, yes. 
Indeed, it was already al Azif. She wanted to unlock the secrets. But why me? Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. What are the demon's projects for humanity? Our aim has long since been to protect humanity from itself. On the other hand, although we give them the impulse to succeed, we don't all agree as to the path they take to achieve it. How would you qualify your species, scientifically? Hmm. Good question. What is your area of expertise? Given the choice, I'd choose philosophy. So, consider us as an idea, Louis. We are but a word in the minds of men. But this word is capable of anything. Empires have been built on words. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. If you could manipulate us mentally, what's the point of all the theatrics of the conference? You must suspect that we asked ourselves that very same question. For many centuries, we didn't organize any conferences. And most of the time, it ended in civil war between demons. Many of us were killed during this period. The idea of organizing conferences was the answer to everything. The interest being to erect some rules among ourselves. Our family first divided up all the principal countries of the world. Now, whenever one of us wants to propose a major change between these countries, they summon the demon in question and initiate a conference. The demon that initiates the proposition doesn't have to give notification of the subject of the conference beforehand. Consequently, we participate along with our best assets. Once the humans are brought together, the conference begins, but we are forbidden to use our talents to influence the participants. The first meeting is held in order to expose the subject to all the participants, followed by several days of reflection, during which we are allowed to be persuasive, but not to impose our will. A second meeting closes the conference with a final vote. So, for you it's a game isn't it? I understand your remark, but after living several centuries, you stand back and enjoy what reflection and pleasure you can. But how do you agree on global policy? Locally, we often have competing interests, and sometimes we start wars between men which are linked to our disagreements. Most of the time, our father steps in and gives directives, which my family follow to the letter. Indeed, in my opinion, it is high time we moved on. What do you mean? I mean that a new era must begin. The old monarchic regimes are outdated, and it's time to evolve. So, Von Borchert, he was looking for the al -Azif for you. Exactly. al -Azif has always belonged to my family, Louis. And with good reason. My father wrote much of it. Can you tell me what you've done with... What? You mean the al -Azif? No, I already know that. Sarah came here with it and got rid of it. I was thinking of Von Bortert. He isn't essential, but he is a trusted person. He's a prisoner at our headquarters in Paris. All right. Did what happened to Elizabeth Adams have anything to do with you? Mm, unfortunately, the poor girl became an issue between us, in spite of herself. A family of demons is still a family, and as in all families, there are disputes. Elizabeth's family, the Adams, has always been under the patriarchal control of my father. As he and myself are not really on very good terms, Sending poor Elizabeth here was terribly rude of him, really. You did accept, though? Mm, no, I would say rather I was presented with a fait accompli by Gregory and went along with the intention of helping her. But this is my castle, 
and everyone is the master of their own home. You're the one who killed her. The poor girl was condemned, Louis. Don't you think it better that she stopped living like a slave, being mentally raped by my father since the day she was born? Maybe you're right. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come, I have something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh, haven't you guessed yet? I've got an idea, but it might seem stupid. Trust me. Am I one? I mean, am I a demon? Would you like that? I must admit that the idea is appealing. Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me. You are one of us, Louis. You too are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent must already have manifested itself somehow. Have you ever had any visions? No. Stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body, without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I... to you. I... what do you mean? Louis. I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I... What? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... no. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. Liar! Well, well. So now you're his bastard. You really took me for a fool. Don't make a move, you clowns! Everybody keep calm. Don't say a word or I'll shoot your kid! Ah, uh, not so clever now, are we? At last I found a way to put the pressure on you, Mortimer. Look, just calm down, monsieur. You stopped me from ending it all. Because of you, I've had to pay for it. You don't know what it's like. He's in your head. He's in your soul. I never want to feel that again. Jack, I did not betray you. You're just like him! How dare you threaten me, then? So that's it, is it? You've gone over to his side, have you? It didn't take you too long, did it? So, what are you gonna do now? You've just found out your true nature. What difference does it make? And you, Jack? How does it make you feel? It changes everything. Well, why? How am I responsible for it? I never said you were. You two are his victim, Louis. But it makes no difference to me. If I let you go, you will proliferate. I must stop all of you. And too bad for me if I have to die for it. You should never have come here. You're just like him. And you all deserve to die. Stop! <laughs> Louis, you want to learn not to walk into danger. Fear not. I've blocked him. He can't move. One more second and he would have shot you. You wanted to save him during the conference, so it's up to you to decide his fate. Does he still deserve your mercy? Or have you had enough? I'll let you choose. But there's still good inside him. Free him. Let him think that he just came here for the conference and that he will serve you with devotion. Fine. But are you acting out of compassion or vengeance? It's out of the question. We can't let this swine get away with it. 
There, it's done. Just calm down, monsieur. You stopped me from ending it all. Because of you, I've had to pay for it. You don't know what it's like. He's in your head. He's in your soul. I never want to feel that again. Jacques, I did not betray you. You're just like him! Monsieur Peru, I don't even know what this is all about. It's quite simple. You're like them! If that's enough to make me unforgivably evil, then I'd prefer you shoot. But I don't feel as if I've changed. I'm... I'm still the same man I was an hour ago. They will corrupt you. It's inevitable. And I won't be able to resist. Like you are now? Uh... Well... Give me the benefit of the doubt. Think about it a moment. So... What are you gonna do now? You've just found out your true nature. What difference does it make? Jack, I can assure you that what Lord Mortimer just told me makes no difference. That's what you think. But you're already in his hands. And you don't even know it, Louis. No, Jack. It's the contrary. Everything that's been happening here has been carefully planned by the Golden Order for months. And everything is going exactly as planned. Lower your weapon. It's all right. It's over. You'll make it through. And you're going to get your life back. You're just like him. You are already. You can't see it, or you don't want to see it. But it's already too late. In fact, I haven't got any choice. You always have a choice. You know very well what will happen to you if you shoot me. If I am indeed a demon now, as Lord Mortimer claims, then I have always been one, Jack. The fact of finding it out today makes no difference to my personality. You can't choose your parents. <laughs> it's over. Come now, monsieur. You know what I told you. Evil and good depend on you, and not on your nature. Yes, it's true, and the same holds true for all of us. Monsieur Peru, I am willing to overlook this latest scene. You can thank my son for that. I think, however, that you are to take your leave for your good and ours, as well as that of your daughter. Too shaken up. You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. You can say that again. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You ought to talk things over with her. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there, inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should... relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you, deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's... a sound very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... Whispers, words, mixed voices. Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. 
I... hear them. Now... now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I... what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. Hang on. You mean to say that if someone lies to me that I will know? Exactly. But... but that's... that's just incredible. You still need to practice, though. There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourself will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear, what is most considered bad form is getting caught. So, I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. Holm? Yes, the old grump is touchy, and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later, if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. Let's see what Mortimer is thinking about. He is thinking he might not have been clear enough with you. When I told you not to try to read into Gregory or her experienced demons, it also applied to me, of course. You... you, you can hear me think? Of course I can. I can sense you. For the moment, your mind shines like a thousand lights because you haven't yet mastered the art of concealment from the psyches of others. So... I give you a weapon, and the first thing you do is try to shoot me with it? If my intentions were evil, you would already be at my mercy. So be very careful on whom you use the talent. All right. On that note, uh, I'd better be going. I'm expected. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris. 1763, at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. It's not that I regret all these discussions, but I must hurry to the wharf. Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You have made the right choice. You must have been disappointed not to have been able to speak to Sarah one last time. I would have liked her to tell you herself. Well, I guess I'll never know now. True. Even so, there is one more thing I haven't told you about her. Sarah was my daughter. What? But why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be... Too many truths to absorb at one time. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? Hard to say. Confused? About everything? I have to admit, it's, it's been a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal. But you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, you can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say? He's not thinking about anything. Louis, 
What have I taught you? Never try to read the thoughts of a demon more experienced than yourself. You cannot read my thoughts. Why won't you learn your lesson? This is the last time I will warn you. Not much. He bid me welcome to the family, that's all. <laughs> Louis, Gregory is my brother. Always has been. And he never goes anywhere to say or do not much. He must have told you that he's worried about me, that he wants to be there for you, and that you ought to be wary of me. Yes, something like that. I think he's worried about you. Worried? <laughs> Marvelous. That's just like him. You know, in a family like ours, we all have a role to play. And his is to worry about everyone else. Let me reassure you, there's no reason for him to worry about me. And what's your role in this family? Mine? Oh, I think they probably feel I'm the eternal naysayer, I suppose. I think one mustn't be afraid of change, and that it is healthy to challenge oneself at regular intervals. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm, I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. So that's your project? Of course not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on. What do you mean? Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? Do you have any more examples? Of course. What obscurantism. By harping on this concept of good and evil, guilt and redemption, look where men are now, locked up in beliefs that should no longer exist. It's time for men to rediscover themselves and to take control of their lives, as they really are, without any moral judgment. Talk to me about slavery. Well, take the slave trade, for example. It's an archaic practice that simply has to stop. Today, Black slaves of America work for free and in unbearable conditions. Tomorrow, if you free the blacks and offer them work along with a salary, they will bless you for it. Then, they will be integrated into the system. They will be taxable. Once they are free, they will have to work for a roof, pay taxes, and feed their families. Maybe we could take away the civil rights of prisoners, for example. In this way, We'll keep control of all those who respect the system and benefit from the others as workforce. And what would you propose for women? They must be given the right to work and to vote. Look, at the moment they don't work. They take care of raising children. What a mistake. We have to get them out of the house. Make them work. In this way, not only will they become consumers, but they will also delegate the job of education to the system. We could guide humanity from a young age, Louis, don't you see? Today we are wasting too much time. Tell me what you think about progress. 
Progress is essential, Louis. It's the future. What else? Progress must liberate humanity from burdensome chores. Progress must replace man, whatever his presence is not obligatory. It creates both the desire and the need. It will liberate women, as soon as the machines are able to do all the chores in the home automatically. It will bring men together by bringing a faster means of locomotion. Look at the cultural revolution that printing brought about. But the most important of all has already been laid. The foundation stone. Freedom of speech. The first amendment of the Constitution. There must be opponents to every project. So, above all, don't develop a one-track approach. Otherwise, man won't have enough room for expression to feel free. If man sees his chains, he will only want to break them. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence. But humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So, that's your objective, is it? To understand who we are? I see your point. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past, and that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. What do you mean exactly? A new skill, and not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. I don't see how I could do that. I shall help you the first time. How do you do it? It's an animal resonance. How it works is still a bit unclear even to us. Like a wave or a sound? That seems the most likely, yes. In my opinion, demons are capable of tuning their psychic frequency to that of others. That is why, for example, I tend to surround myself with deaf and dumb servants. The servants dressed in black. I infiltrated them. I opened a channel between them and me, and then I deprived them of speech and hearing. This way, no other demon can turn them against me. Okay, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaget to inform the Pope he has changed signs. You... you're going to use your powers to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play. As well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room.
you will have to write a letter to the Pope as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me, and I'll send it off immediately. All right, I'll take care of it. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your cursed letter. Volner dropped into Sipiaji. He saw my body and wanted to take advantage of it, being inert to, to get rid of me. What? What are you saying? I, I wanted to intervene, but being in Piaggi's body, I, I was unable to stop him. The slime bag poisoned me. Good God, no. It can't be possible. Do you have an antidote? Louis, when you're evil enough to use poison, the first thing you do is make sure there is no antidote. That's horseshit. You must know of a remedy. I mean, you've been around for centuries. You're a chemist. You must know about poisons. Yes, but I don't know everything. I think your best chance is to count on your demon nature. I'm confident that you'll be able to resist the poison, whatever it is. That's all you've got for me? Your answer is to wait and see? Have faith in yourself, Louis. The same thing happened to me. I'm not saying it's going to be a barrel of laughs. I'm condemned, aren't I? That bastard, I'm gonna kill him for this. Oh, no, 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 no. You haven't the right. At least not here. That said, I can promise you he will pay dearly for this outrage. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Johan infected Louis with poison to eliminate him before the conference, Gregory. I... No. He wouldn't. You know what that means. No, wait! There must be an explanation. In my residence, he attacked my son. And Johan is mine. If he made the unforgivable error of attacking Louis, I will personally take care of him. He will be gone by this evening. How do you feel? I want him to pay. I can assure you he will be punished. I'll be firm. But I must do it alone. He's my son. I refuse to put Johan at your mercy. All right. Louis, you can trust him. Johan will have to take responsibility for his action. If you didn't know Johan had poisoned Louis, then what did you come here for? I came to persuade you to let him choose. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit that the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. Well, honestly, I... My stomach was just... Turning in circles. <laughs> that reminds me of my first time. Ooh. But you did it. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother. 
Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity. Through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to our demise. There he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. Does he have an inferiority complex? I've told him time and time again, Louis. He always has to take it one step too far. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn? It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. When you speak of the right order, I can't help hearing your order. Louis, wouldn't you think that by now we've acquired a certain experience? Don't you think that we're the best place to know what the right order should be by now? I mostly understand that even with the best of intentions, this kind of talk could well be misinterpreted. Every powerful man has had to speak in this way at some stage. That doesn't mean that they were right or that they achieved great things. Take the kings of France, for example. They weren't all good monarchs. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over, and now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. <coughs> If you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If, on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I'd better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature and do all I can to stay human? It's useless trying to resist my true nature. I'm a demon. May as well accept it. The sooner the better. Even if I continue to live as a human, all my friends and acquaintances will inevitably end up dying. And I'll be left on my own, forever. I'm a demon and I have to behave like one. The sooner, the better. So? <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? I shall follow my father, Sir Gregory. Very well. But don't say I didn't warn you. Please, don't take offense, but... I just can't turn my back on him. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose 
you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. Come, follow me. It's time for us to get ready. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us, and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is? You. My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards.